All right, so I want to take just a minute, and before we get started with the second half, I want to uh, take just a moment to thank our director, Josie Parker, who's here tonight. And she's the type of boss who comes and sits in the worst seat in the house. So thank you to Josie for making all of this possible for us. And with that, I'm going to bring Ryan up on stage for the second half. Please welcome Ryan Burns. All right, who's ready to get started again? Laboratorium. Woo! Just uh, one brief programming note. Um, I should have brought my fake reading glasses for this one to pull down my nose, but um, I just wanted to mention that the fourth talk in this half does involve some discussion and a couple images of uh, Victorian self-pleasuring, FYI. <laughs> All right, let's get this started. Our first speaker this half is a biologist with broad scientific interests in viruses and evolution, complemented by even broader interests in Scrabble, Pokemon, and the zombie apocalypse. Please welcome Kayla Peck. All right, today I'm going to tell you about my favorite scientist, Louis Pasteur or LP as I like to call him. So who here has an idea of maybe what Louis Pasteur is known for? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so hopefully today I can tell you three things that you didn't know about LP or just three things that you didn't know about science. So you'll hear a story about crystals, milk, and rabies. So I first became really interested in LP when I saw his name pop up in my organic chemistry textbook. So I was being a very diligent undergrad and, of course, reading the entire chapter. And then I saw the name Louis Pasteur, and I'm like, hold up a second. He's a microbiologist. What is his name doing in this textbook? So I decided to investigate a little bit further. LP was uh, born in France in the 1800s, and he started out by wanting to be a, an artist. So these are actually two portraits that he did in high school. Now, of course, LP's father did not want him to be an artist. He wanted him to be a teacher. And so LP set off to become a chemist. Now, the first thing that he was working on was trying to explain why when some molecules crystallized, they rotated light, but other molecules that crystallized did not rotate light. And this was extremely puzzling to chemists. What LP actually discovered was that crystals could have a handedness. Now, just like your hands are made up of the same thing, they're not identical. They're actually mere images of each other. Crystals can have the same thing. When light passes through a mixture of crystals that are, have, are mirror images of each other, the light rotation cancels out. Now, light rotations and mirror image crystals are very exciting to organic chemists, but maybe something that's more exciting to the rest of us is alcohol. So the next thing that LP did was he was trying to explain why wine spoiled. Now, to us today, it might be kind of obvious that, of course, microbes can cause wine to spoil. But uh, at the time, in the 1800s, scientists were still trying to figure out what microbes were, where they came from, how they got around. So LP found out that you could heat wine and other liquids, such as beer, to a high enough temperature to kill the microbes, but not high enough that it would actually spoil the quality of those beverages. And so they named this process pasteurization in his honor. Now, when we think about pasteurization, we typically associate it with milk, but it actually wasn't associated with milk until much later. For example, in the United States, they didn't require milk to be pasteurized until the 1940s. So even though you kind of think about it, oh, yay, milk, it actually originated with alcohol. Now, LP's interest in microbes led to his next endeavor, which was disease prevention. So now I'm going to tell you about the deadliest virus in existence, which is rabies virus. So when I say rabies virus, you might think of, oh, I have to give my pet a booster shot this year. Or maybe you envision um, an animal foaming at the mouth, being extremely aggressive and deranged. Um, and that image wouldn't necessarily be wrong. So rabies virus works by altering the behavior of its host so that it will go out and bite another creature and thus spread the virus. Now, if you're bit by a rabid animal, the virus will travel up through your central nervous system to your brain very slowly. So you might not see symptoms for three weeks to three months. The first symptom you'd see would be something like the flu, maybe nothing to worry about. But the next symptom you would get would be hydrophobia. So you would be extremely thirsty, and yet your body would start convulsing if you tried to take a drink of water. If you managed to get that cup to your lips, you would start gagging. After hydrophobia would become um, really bad hallucinations, um, you'd become extremely deranged, and you would eventually die. So rabies has a 100% fatality rate without the vaccine, which is, you guessed it, where LP comes in. 
So rabies was killing a lot of people during LP's time, so he decided that he wanted to try and make a vaccine. Now his approach was to take the saliva from rabid dogs and put it in other animals over and over again to weaken the virus. So that way you could put the weakened virus back into humans and then it would cause your immune system to respond but not actually cause you to have hydrophobia and die. Now, I just told you that uh, LP needed saliva from rabid dogs. Legend has it that he would walk into a pen with a rabid dog armed only with two assistants and leather gloves. He would then wrestle the dog to get the saliva into a glass test tube. Now, if this sounds dangerous, well, LP sure thought so. He had a revolver near the pen such that if he were bit, the braver of his two assistants would have to save him from his eventual fate. Now, if that doesn't sound badass, I don't know what scientists will. Um, due to these efforts, uh, our LP was able to create a successful rabies vaccine. So now, if you're bit by a rabid animal, you go get three or four shots, you're fine, and you do not succumb to all of the horrible fates that would await you otherwise. If LP isn't your favorite scientist after this, that's fine, I understand. Um, but hopefully what you can remember is, one, crystals can have a handedness. Two, pasteurization actually originated with wine. And three, rabies is really scary, but luckily there's a vaccine. So thanks, LP. Thank you, Kayla. We're all now down with LP. Yeah, you know me. Um, Thank you.